Okay, so it's Al Angelo from A Plus Racing. Yeah, I had my soda. Mike's here. He had his soda too. We got uh, Katie filming us right now. But uh, hey, come here. Th say hi to Mike. So it seems like you guys are seeing Mike at the racetrack a lot. That's because I'm working Mike like a dog. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he's over there barking at the Sonoma Raceway. But I'm glad you guys get a chance to meet Mike and see him. He does a, a lot for A Plus Racing. So I gave him a little gift here. But uh, anyhow, uh, so hey, we're watching those videos on the differential swap. If you haven't watched the uh, prior videos, what we did was we took a, a 410 Torsen rear end and a 430 open rear end, and we took the Torsen spool out of the 410 and we put it in the 430. So 430 diffs are tough to find now, man. They're getting really hard. So I'm having to make them up from a 430 open and turn it into a 430 torso, okay? So without, without dragging this on, I wanna get right into um, the video on how to set this whole thing up. So the next, this video, we're gonna be actually putting it all back together and then eventually setting up the backlash. No, I don't do a pattern check. Uh, I mean, I could, but what, what, it's not gonna be, once I set the backlash at four thousandths, whatever the pattern is, that's what the pattern's gonna be. So, like I said, this is not the right way of doing it. This is the wrong way of doing it. Um, will it work? Yes, it will. Will it howl and make noise? It's possible, all right? Okay, so without further ado, let's get with it, all right? I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so let's put this ring gear on. All right, so here's my ring gear right here, and I'm just gonna set it down here, and then this goes right on the top like that, okay? So here's my bolts right here, and I'm going to line up the holes. I pull it up until they're fairly lined up like that, okay? And I'm gonna start this bolt here. I don't have to start it too far. Okay, I'm gonna take some Loctite. I'm gonna put it on every one of these. If you don't Loctite these, they could back off. Man, it's going to be a grenade. You're going to have shrap metal everywhere. Okay. And I'm just using the blue Loctite. I didn't Loctite this one. I put a little Loctite on that one. These are special bolts, so if you lose one, you, you can't just go to the hardware store and buy one of these. Okay. Almost got it here. And then we're going to have to torque this. And we're going to use a star pattern so we can walk, walk it up a little at a time. So. Okay, all right. All right, so let's see. According to the Bible, let's see. Yeah, the phone, I think you passed it back here. Did I pass it? Oh, yeah. there it is. Okay, thanks, Mike. Mike's yeah, keeping no me honest. Keeping me honest. All right, so the ring gear, it says right here, apply thread lock compound to the bolt threads, which I did. And then it says torque them to 51 to 61 foot pounds. All right, so I'm gonna take this over to the vise. <clears throat> okay, 51 to 61. All right, so I got my torque wrench. All right, so let's see. There's 20, 30, 40, 
50, 51 to 61, we'll go 65. Okay. Yeah, and I'm just gonna use And I like to use a star pattern on this. And then I'll come back and double check them all. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to go all the way around. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've got a torsion. Everything's cleaned up. We got new bearings, new races. And I think we're ready to go back together. All right. As I stated before, this is merely me changing to a 430 gearing torsion from a 410. All right, it's not the right way to do it. It's the wrong way of doing it, but it's the way that I do it for race cars. You asked for it. I'm showing it to you. If you're going to ask me about what's going on in here, that's a completely different ball game. Okay, so once you start taking this apart, there's a lot more involved in setting up um, the preload with the. Uh, the, um, what the heck's that part called in there? Uh, now this crush sleeve. There's a crush sleeve in there that have to set the preload on here. There's shims in here that have to be set. If you got to go in here, unless you really kind of know what you're doing, then you might want to take it to a shop. And I don't normally say that, all right? But usually we don't, we don't have a problem. Well, I can't say that. One sixes have a problem with this nut falling off. And there's not really a torque spec. This nut sets the preload on two bearings in here. So the tighter you tighten it, then the more the preload is. So this is kind of a delicate area. This, not so much. All right, so let's just move forward here. All right, so... Um, uh, I think I had a way where I put this in the vise and did it. So let me go back to the vise. Hmm, if I like that. Okay, might not be too bad. All right, so one of these has a mark on it. All right, so I want to make sure that I'm very careful about not mixing up the marks. So I'm going to set this here. Set that one there. All right. Move my water. Oh, Freaking guys. Okay. All right. So no, you don't have to put any grease on these bearings. Or we never do. Um, this thing gets submerged in, you know, diff fluid anyway. So we should be good. All right. Just want to dry this off. Make sure everything's spotlessly clean. Okay. All right, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the two races on, like that. I'm going to drop the carrier in. And they're probably everything's going to fall out anyways. That's okay. I don't charge any extra. Right. My dad used to t teach me. Can't see it from my house. All right, I set these in here and these thread in. And these things, these things are kind of tricky. So this is going to be one of the, the trickier parts here. Is putting the cap on. All right, okay. 
So I want to make sure we put the caps on the right way. And what I do is I don't tighten them up all the way. I just start them. A little piece of lint there. I said this is going to be a little trickier part so you got to try to get these threads all lined up on the cap and on the housing <clears throat> and then we're going to torque these last close to being last kind of don't like the way that one's sitting down in there but we'll give it a try All right, so now we have to set the backlash. You see this movement right here? This is backlash, okay? It needs to be about four thousandths of an inch, all right? And we can check, we can check it. Um, most rear ring guys, they kind of get a feel for it. This is, well, this is a crunchy mile, okay? And so we gotta get like a, so what we have to do is we have to move the ring gear that way, all right? And so we move it by loosening up one side and tightening up the other. Now. I'm sure there's play, you can see there's play this way right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just walk this one this way until, and see how much play I can get rid of with that, all right? So um, they do make a special tool for it. No, I don't have it. All right, so this one might be big. All right, so I'm just gonna turn, turn this collar. No, this might be too tight. So right now we're moving the whole ring and pinion over into that ring gear, decreasing the backlash. Okay. Okay, so I think I buried out, or I'm close to burying out on the other side. Ooh. So I think now I'm going to need to back this side out. Yep. Okay. And then tighten up this side. Still too much. Can't believe I'm showing you guys this trick. Okay, still too much. I think specs is four thousands. I know when I did Fords, I think there were eight. But uh, 
think this one's four. Still way too much. We're going to move it a lot this time. Ooh, uh. I think we're close, just a hair bit more. And then we'll we'll get out the dial indicator and look at check it out. Close. I mean I could run it like this if I didn't have a dial indicator. It's it's just a tad bit of movement. I think that's I think you still need to walk over a little more. Okay. Yep. Okay, I think that's it. We're gonna pause for a minute. I'm gonna go get my uh, dial indicator and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I've got this dial indicator set up and I think I got this set right, okay? So I've got my dial indicator here and I know it's kind of hard to see uh, and it's also hard to do here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep it from turning. And if I just wiggle the play, the backlash, I can see that we're about about four thousandths okay and if i look up here in the book it says that the specification right here 0 0.3 0 0.0036 which is about four thousandths to 0 0.0043 which is about almost four and a half thousand so i think we're pretty close right there all right so that looks good all right so i've got that and so now i can go ahead and torque my caps all right, so, and the caps are going to get torqued to, yes, 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 here it is, 27 to 38, okay? So, so let's see, 27 to 38, so let's just go 30. All right, so there's 30. Double check. All right. Okay. Now we can go ahead and put our uh, keepers back on. Let me grab those real quick. Okay. That goes here. Okay. And this one goes on this side here. Okay, and the keepers get torqued to uh, 13 pounds. And there are 12. Mm, I know I had a 12 here. Oh, thanks Mike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Twelve pounds. Okay. 
You get the light torques like this, you might not feel it click. You got to be real sensitive about that. Double check. Differential gear ratio change the wrong way because you asked for it. All right. Hey, hit that subscribe button. I went through a lot of trouble on this video. I hope that you liked it. All right. So the next one is we're going to put in a housing. We'll do that on the next video. All right. Hey, thank you very much for chiming in. Subscribe. See you at the racetrack. Bye.